All right, so let's go over an indexed annuity when it comes to the income streams that you get. That's what uh, I want to share with you today. Yes, let me close this door. Uh, Pablo just made his presence known. He said, I'm out. So yesterday I did a video where he showed you an index annuity in terms of the accumulation. And, uh, it was, and I was just using it based off the uh, Alliance or Allianz uh, stuff that they had given my man Steve. And uh, the, from I think it was from 19... Was it 1989 through 1998, which is a time of, uh, or maybe 1989, that's what it was, 1989 through 1998, a pretty significant run in the stock market for sure. And that left the uh, index annuity uh, just suck and went, no other way around. In fact, at the end of that 10 year time frame, the index annuity, if you wanted to cash that sucker out, if you put 100,000 bucks in there, you only had $157,000 in walk away money. On the S&P 500, you had $574,000. So that was that was bad. So in terms of accumulation value, it was it was it wasn't close. And so when I hear these guys, like there's one guy on a advisor perspectives that I follow and I comment on, I don't really do so much anymore, but I used to a lot. He's like index annuities will beat uh, the uh, will guarantee to beat bonds and probably beat the stock market. I say, like, how do you how can you possibly say that? Uh, no, sorry. Well, here he is. Okay, come on back. There you go, buddy. All right, so anyway, but there's two things that come with an index annuity. One is the accumulation value. And remember, it's, it's going to be tough for the accumulation value to beat the S&P 500 or whatever the index you use because it has cap rates. In this case, it has a 6% cap, and it doesn't use dividends. So, I mean, inherently, you're, you're operating with freaking... You know, Pablo has got four legs, three legs are tied behind your back. Don't do that. But that's just from an accumulation value. So there's two ways you look at annuity and index annuities. One's you look at the accumulation value and a variable annuity too, by the way. Both these things work kind of the same concept. The accumulation value is what your walk away money is. All right. That is the money you can get into your account when you leave. You say, send me a check. They're going to say your accumulation value, net of any surrender charge. And right now, we're not. We're going to assume there is no surrender charges, but index annuities have pretty significant surrender charges. So your accumulation value is your walk away money, how much they will give you to leave to leave them to close out the contract. Annuities also have what's called an enhanced. In this case, it's called an enhanced withdrawal benefit or an income benefit. Uh, some will use, but in this case, it's called an enhanced withdrawal benefit. And what that means is while your accumulation value is one thing, then the withdrawal benefit is different. That's the amount you can take out each and every year without worrying about it losing money. It's, uh, it's nice, actually. So the withdrawal benefit will probably almost all the time be higher than your accumulation value because you cannot take this out. You can't take it out of one lump sum. The withdrawal benefit is based on a certain percentage over the course of your life. In this case, if you're 60 to 69, you can take 5% a year out for the rest of your life without ever worrying about running out of money, without ever worrying about it going down in value. You'll never run out of money. It's 5% a year out based on the initial withdrawal benefit. And we'll get into that here in just a second. Uh, but you can't take one lump sum. You just say, give me my 5% a year and they'll get it. If you're 70 to 79, it's 5.5%. And if you're 80 and above, it's 6%. And most contracts are similar to this. All right, so let's dive into this a little bit. So we started uh, in 1989 with 100,000 bucks. When all was said and done, we had $157,000 as our walk away money, our accumulation value. But because we had an enhanced benefit where they basically say, we're gonna give you a 20% benefit up front. So they're saying we're not starting with 100,000 bucks. We're starting with $120,000 as an income benefit. And it's a little bit, what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, look, when all is said and done, uh, you will essentially, if you hold this for 10 years, you will have doubled your income benefit base. You start with 100,000 bucks. In 10 years, you have $200,000 for which you can draw 5% a year off because my man here, Steve, is, is uh, 60 years old, so he could draw 5% a year off. Does that make sense? So you start with that, and most annuities work like this. We will guarantee a doubling of your income benefit if you hold it for 10 years. So uh, again, you start with 100,000 bucks, regardless of what accumulation value is, we know for a fact, and we're gonna guarantee you for a fact that you can take 5% a year off at a minimum of doubling what you initially started with. In this case, it'd be 200,000 bucks because we started with 100. Now, it could be more if the markets do better, but it's, it's something. I mean, if it didn't do better in the 1990s, it's, it's not gonna happen. And the, the reason won't be more is because the fees are too high. So what happens is, oh, what a good dog. 
1998, all right, the market, the index was up 26.6%, but you have a cap. Remember, you got a ceiling and you got a floor. You're never going to make more than 6%. You're never going to make less than zero, all right? So you have a cap, you have a ceiling and a floor. But on the income benefit, they give you a 0.3% kicker. So 6.3% is the indexed amount. So what happens is when all is said and done, we have an enhanced withdrawal benefit, 192,000. We take 5% of that, which gives us $9,633 guaranteed. It'll never be lower than that, ever. Because we have 6.3% is what we made, we 9.6 times 6.3% gives us 10,240. That is our income benefit. That is our floor now. It'll never be below this 6.3% uh, uh, increase because the index went up. But the index went up 26%, the index went up 19.53. We're just getting increase of 6.3%, so nothing right home about. However, in the following years, the index went down. So you can see we got no income increase, none, but we didn't lose any income either. Does that make sense? So we ended up in 10,240 at the end of 1990, but 19, uh, 2000, the market went down. We kept 10,240. It did not go down in value. In terms of our income, we're able to take 10,000 a year out from income because that is our floor now. 2001 and 2002, same thing happened. The market went down, the market went down. We stayed at $10,240. That's what makes this kind of, that's the benefit here, is it'll never go below your, whatever the lock-in rate is here, if that makes sense. So that's good. Now, on, unfortunately though, the withdrawal benefit, if we wanted to walk away from this, that is now down to $125,000. And the reason for that is because in the end of 1999, well, let's just go here. We started with 157,000, we took out $9,633, we got credit to our account, um, 6%, all right, so we go 157 minus 9,633, uh, 9, times 6%, because this is the accumulation value, it leaves us $156,000. So we still are end, ended up losing, it's not really losing money, having less money in the account than we started with because we took that income off it. We took $9,633 off the portfolio and we only were able to add 6% more, thus we lost money, we have less money. On the income benefit itself, the same thing happened, but here, because we're starting with 192,000, and we don't just get six, we get 6, we get 6.3 percent, 192,000 minus 9,633 times 1.063, 6.3 percent, leaves us with 194,000 as our income base, if that makes sense. All right. So now the next year, well, 194,000, but we lost money. Well, we didn't make any, I should say, minus 10,240 gives us 184,000. Minus 10,240, 174,000. Minus 10,240, 163,000 because we didn't add any benefit, we didn't add any growth to it. On the accumulation value, same thing. 156,000 minus the amount we take out and we didn't lose any money in terms of rate of return. We, got, we had a floor, but we still didn't make any money. In fact, because we didn't make any money, we took money out. Our accumulation value is 156 minus the 10,000. No rate of return, so our accumulation value is, is less by $10,000. The following year, less by $10,000. The following year, less by $10,000. So now we're at $125,000 as accumulation value. We took 10,240 out, and even though we got a 6% rate of return, well, 6% rate of return on 125,000 is not enough to cover the amount we took out. So here we have a declining base on an accumulation value, uh, and we're pulling more money out than we're adding to it. So in this case, it's, it's inevitable. This right, the accumulation value is gonna be zero. It will be zero, probably in, I'm hell, probably in freaking seven years. You're going to run out of money on the accumulation, i.e. you will not leave anything to your heirs. There's no getting around that. You won't. And that's the drawback. If you want to leave something to your heirs, you're not going to. So always remember that. If you're trying to do an index annuity and you're going to take out the money that they say they'll give it to you, you're not leaving anything to your heirs. There's just no other way around that. And the reason is simple. Because even though you don't lose money from an income stream, well, you're still pulling money out, which is reducing your accumulation value. Or in this case, your, your cash value and you're pulling it out, and you're not making enough to cover it. So here, even though we have 122,000, 122, and we made 6.3%, we took $10,000 out. And that's like an 8.5% distribution rate, and we're only adding 63 
We're losing money in front of our very eyes. And so at the end of 2008, we are down to $81,000. And, and we're, we're, we have a floor of $13,158. We're never, this will, I mean, again, you're not, this will go away. Even though the markets went up significantly over the next 10 years, this thing, when we, I could run this out, it'd be done. It'd be done in seven years. And the simple reason is 80,000 times the max you're going to get is 6.3% minus the 13,158 you're taking out, that sucker's done. But even if this runs to zero, even if that goes to zero, you are still guaranteed a minimum of $13,158. That's the benefit of these annuities. Even if the accumulation value goes to nothing, you are guaranteed to get a minimum of this amount because that was your floor amount. So what happens here on the income base? You want to go out? Okay, here you go. It's okay. You can go out when you want to stay. What happens here is the income base can actually go up. So here you got $10,240. Dude, make up your mind, boobs. All right, but the market went up 6.3%. Now the market itself went up 26%, but the, in terms of the, the index interest rate is crediting you to because of the, the ceiling, it went up 6.3%, which means 10,240 times 6.3%, it gives us a $600 increase in income. The following year, the same thing. Another 6.3% gives us a $600 uh, uh, yeah, $700 increase in income. The following year, it went up 3%. It actually went up 3 but they give us a little bit of a kicker, a 3.15 um, instead of 6.3. I don't know why, but whatever. And it went up 3.15% in income. So essentially, this is like an inflation adjustments for income. You know for a fact, you'll never have less than whatever this is on any given year. It's going to lock that in. But as the markets go up, you will get yourself an increase in income of, of, of no, no less than zero and no more than 6.3%. And so here, market goes up, we get another 6.3% increase in income. Market is up 3.53. It gives us a, uh, what is that, 0.15, I guess, kicker, something like that. It gives us another 3.71% uh, increase in income. And then the market went, uh, in 2008, obviously went down. We didn't lose anything, anything at all. In an income in it from an income so even though the market went down 39 38 percent we kept our income stream flat which is nice which is absolutely that's not a bad place to be all right now at the end of the day this enhanced withdrawal balance it doesn't it literally means nothing it does at the i mean once you start your but your withdrawals this right here is irrelevant the accumulation value i'm just telling you right now you're almost always going to go to zero in that you're never going to leave money to your kids most likely um it's simply not the enhanced withdrawal benefit here, this is just a meaningless number because this is all that matters. How much are you going to get for the rest of your life? Is it going to ever drop? No. Could it go up? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's what matters. As long as this, uh, as, so as long as you're living, you will get this money, which is good. It could be more, which I like. So after 10 years, was yeah, 11 years, you, had, you have $123,000 of income you're able to take out of the portfolio. And you're left with eighty-one thousand dollars of uh, of cash value. All right. So you said I put a hundred thousand dollars in in nineteen eighty-nine. After twenty years, I was able to take more than what I initially put in uh, by twenty-five percent, roughly, and I got eighty thousand dollars to show for it. So essentially, my hundred thousand dollars paid me in terms of cash value and income. Uh, 200,000 bucks. So I put in 100,000 bucks, waited 10 years, and I was able to get $123,000 of income, guaranteed, no risk at all other than the insurance company going bankrupt, and I still had 80,000 left to show for it. Uh, waiting another 10 years, you know for a fact you'll get 13,000 a year times 10, another $131,000 of income at a minimum, but it would be more than that because the next 10 years we know the markets went up. But then this will be zero, all right? So you're not gonna have anything to show for it, but you'll be having a guaranteed income that's rising as the markets do. Now that's not bad. Let's compare the S&P 500. Now remember, the odds were a bad decade for the S&P 500. We started with $100,000 in the S&P 500 in 1989. We ended with 574,000 bucks. $425,000 more. We made 400, uh, was that for? Yeah, we had $425,000 more than we did in the index annuity. 
Now I'm just going to take 5% of your off because remember we're doing 5% as our initial withdrawal rate. I'm just doing 5% of your off with no guarantees. We're just doing 5% off whatever the portfolio is. Does that make sense? So this is guaranteed. This is not. We're just doing 5% a year, no matter what. All right. So in this case, 5% of 574 is 28,700. 28, Three times what that is. Now the market went up 19.53%. So 574 minus 28,000 times one point is actually more than that because we got a factor in dividends. I can't remember off the top of my head what the market did in this year in 1999. I have it written down here, my little writing. Uh, so the market in 1999 went up, uh, I can't remember, I, I guess I didn't write it down. I just I just did it in my calculator and wrote it down. All right, but it went up you know, 19.53 plus whatever the dividends are. So we have 574, so we took out 28,700. We added roughly 23,000, 23% 23 rate of return. We have 659,000. We took 5% of 659,000, that's 32,000. And then we lost 10%. So 570 minus the 5% of 570 is 28,000. We lost 13%. Actually, we lost 9, 11, and 22 here. 9, 12, and 22, I should say. So now we're down to 476. We took out 5% of 476, which is 23,000. And we're down another 22%, uh, which left us 353. We took out 5% of that, $17,000. Now we're up 26, you know, again, this is without dividends. We have to factor dividends. So you can see we're back up to 431, back up and we're taking 21,000 out, 22,000 out, 22,000, 24, 24. Then 2008 comes along, we're at 496. We take out 5% of 496, which is basically $25,000. Then we got smoked, we're down 37% roughly on the S&P 500. So 496 minus 25,000 minus 38%, uh, we're left with $297,000 in our portfolio. And then we took out 414,000 because 5% of whatever the balance is, uh, that was 14,850. So when all said and done, we took out $262,000, which is more than twice what we did in the annuity. And we still had 297,000 to show for it. It's not even debatable. And this is the us, literally the worst decade we've had since the Great Depression. And that, I mean, and then you factor in the next 10 years, this is going to zero. I'd even do what this would have done over the next 10 years. I can, I mean, so this right here is zero. In fact, I could easily say, what would this be? You know, we know it'd be 6% a year at most, 6.3. And here we got, you know, the last 10 years, the freaking mark is what, tri uh, not, is what they tripled. It's insane. So in this case, we, I, it's, it's just it's just not debatable. So we had the years of, for a 30 year retirement, let's say you're 50 years old, you're gonna dump $100,000 in, into an index annuity. The next 10 years, you just let it happen, let it accumulate. The next 10 years, you're gonna start pulling money out. The next 10 years before you die, uh, this right here, the S&P 500, just, I mean, it's just not debatable. You would have smoked it. Now, this one guy, like I said, will say, oh, but bonds. Well, we're not talking bonds, man. And we we're talking stocks because the whole sales pitch of these guys is market-like returns. I expect you to average between 5 and 8% a year. It, it, I mean, how can you if how can you average 5 to 8% a year if the max you can get is 6? That doesn't make any sense. So we go 3. Let's just run these numbers real quick. I mean, it's just oh, the sales pitch on these guys is horrific. So this is in 1998 to 2008. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We got uh, twelve point six. We're just gonna do the six. Twelve, twenty-four, uh, thirty, thirty-six. So we got thirty-six percent total return divided by eleven years. That was three point two seven. The guy, the sales guy, who talked to my man Steve. Said you should get five between five and eight percent a year. It, it didn't even come close to that, man. And that's in the odds. And I mean, the most you could, I mean, literally the most you could get on any given, if you had 10 years is 6%. So the most you could get, if you had all upside, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, you get 60, uh, six, uh, 60 percent divided by 10. So that's six, the most you could get is 6%. Uh, nuts. Anyway, it's not even debatable what's the, way, the better way to go. So the question is, would you have been able to hang in there when you're down to $17,000 here and you're down to 353,000? I mean, in hindsight, sure, but you didn't know if it was going to keep going down or not. Now, you're more than double here. Hell, you're two and a half times what the value is in here. And, well, no, I'm sorry, three times what the value is in here. 
and you're making 70% more in income, all right? I mean, look at this though. It, you're making, even on the worst case, you're making $14,000, $15,000, which is still $2,000 more than that. More of the story, stay away from index annuities, man. It just, it doesn't make sense to do it. Um, I, look, if you want bond-like returns, get CDs, man. Uh, but if you want stock-like returns, you just got to have stocks and hang in there when the markets go down. Where's it going to? Right. Hey, if you got questions, comments, concerns, put them down there. I'd love to hear your thoughts. We'll see you.